Hey guys, it's Mike from Adano, and in this video, I'm going to talk you through how you customize your modular scalable financial models. Now, customizing modular scalable models is actually a lot easier than customizing static models because you can leverage off existing module libraries and a lot of the customizations are automated. Now, to demonstrate this, I've just opened an example of a one financial model, which contains some historical data and some forecasts. And I'm going to focus on doing some basic customization of forecasts. There is really no limit to which you can sort of stop customizing. Um, but the key is always thinking, what can I customize without building from scratch? And that means leveraging the 80,000 plus modules we have in the libraries available to you in the platform um, and trying to do everything you can to, to leverage existing content and edit that before you start building stuff from scratch. Building from scratch is risky, time consuming, it's all bad. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can add another revenue, another block of revenue to this model. At this moment, we have, say, a revenue module forecasting three categories of revenue that are coming from the historical income statement. I'm going to go to the revenue here and just insert another block of revenue. So I can just go into insert from web, and this is the modular nature of this. You see, I'm sorry, I've done replace. You can see there, that's the revenue module when I hit replace that I'm looking at now. I can do insert from web, and I can insert another revenue module. So you see in this library, we have a whole bunch of modules and all these are different revenue modules. In this case, I'm just going to put another revenue amounts module in and click insert. And this will insert another revenue module, which will automatically add categories to the historical income statement. And that will flow through to the all periods financial statements and everywhere else in the model where revenue needs to go. Okay, so once this is added, you'll see I've now got revenue and revenue two down here. Okay, so the first revenue, I'm just going to rename that module Australia. And then I'm going to rename this module down here, United States. Okay, now that doesn't mean much because it's just the modules themselves, but I'm going to go back to the historical income statement and I'm going to say, oh, you'll see now I've now got three extra categories for my United States module that I've just added. So I'm just going to put a subtotal in here and this is all completely automated. I'm not, I'm not, and I'm just going to put this as AU. And I'm just going to do US here. And you'll see that these, these categories, so if I go here, A, B, and C, whoops, and C, and I put those, you'll see if I now go to my all periods financials down here, I now have under there, A, B, and C, and I'm going to add subtotals to here too. Okay, so to make, and I'm also going to link that subtotal heading back to my historical income statement, just so that they are consistent. And I'm going to put this subtotal heading back to my United States subtotal. So I've now got in here Australia and United States subtotals. I haven't got any data for United States, but it's what you do for stores or regions, etc. But I could come in now and just and just actually duplicate that United States module. And this is going to add another module exactly the same as the United States module below the United States module with another three categories that is going to be put backwards. So here's my third category. I can name this category, say I can name this module, say United Kingdom. And then you'll see if I go back now to my historical income statement, it's added another category, it's expecting UK. And if I go to my all periods financial statements, I now have UK in there. So I've now got Australia, US and UK. So I can literally add categories of blocks of categories extremely easily with different forecast metrics just using existing libraries. And that's the key to think about, do I have an existing module? Now, you can also come in and change the way in which these things are forecast. So for example, let's assume on this case, I wanted to change these forecasts from being based on amounts. I could just replace one of these modules from web and choose, I'm going to choose year on year growth rates. So I'm going to replace this module with say year on year growth rates module. And you can see I have a whole lot of different modules. You can then customize if you like. In this case, I'm just going to put year on year growth rates in. It's going to try and retain assumptions because I had that option switched on, but they're very different assumptions. So it's not going to work. And it's going to tell me that assumptions could not be retained, but I can go in now and just put say 10% and, and that's going to calculate my output. So if I now go to my income statement summary, I've got my forecast coming through here from Cocovic sales and other. Okay. So that's how I can change the forecast drivers again without actually changing, touching Excel. Now let's assume. I then wanted to forecast a different category operating expenditure. So if I go down to my operating expenditure down here, I've got research and development as the last category. Let's assume we're going to have an enormous Christmas party in December 21 and spend, say, $200,000. I could just go in here and just do insert categories. And you can do multiple categories if you like up the top. I'm just going to put one in. I'm going to put 200 in for the Christmas party. 
and I'm going to go back. That's going to add it a category to my historical income statement. And I'm just going to put Christmas party on here. And if I now go through, through to my all periods financial statements, you can see I've now got under my net operating expenses. I've now got the Christmas party coming through. Wait for it. Christmas money coming through in 2021 in December. Okay, and if I go to my if I go to my income statement summary, you'll see for December now I've got my costs coming through down here. These are grouped as other. I can come in here and just say insert categories. And now it's got research and development and other. I'm going to put another category in. And there's the Christmas party coming through there. And now I can display the Christmas party. If I print preview that, I've now got the Christmas party coming through as a line item in that summary. Okay, so another thing you can do is, for example, add different modules that aren't currently in this. So under the report section, I've currently got an income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. I'm just going to say insert, say, an annual income statement. So let's assume I just want to see an annual income statement. I'm just going to go into annual, start typing annual. You can search. I'm going to do annual income statement. Chart of accounts 5 is the model, is the chart of accounts we used for this. That's why the library all has chart of accounts 5 on the financials. I can put an annual income statement in. And that annual income statement is, is actually a reports module we're building here. And there's my annual income statement. So you can see I've got total revenue for the current year of 27817.9, which if I go to my income statement summary, I should have that there, 27818 there. Okay, and then you'll see I've got net profit 1187. And I've got my annual income statement 111187 down there. Okay, and it's the same with anything. So, for example, I could put an annual financial statement summary in if I wanted to. That will contain some annual financial statement. I could put an annual financial statement summary dashboard if I wanted to view annual financial statement summary for this model. Um, I think this model only has three years in it. Annual financial statement summary module has five. So you would then go in with Excel and customize the dashboard, or you would actually increase the number of periods in the model if you wanted to actually see more periods. And there's my annual financial statement summary. Okay, so, and it is, it is interesting stuff because with this stuff, I could just go in and change the number of periods on this if I wanted to and actually make that just three periods by just deleting columns, for example. So the mentality you want to, you want to think of when you're customizing your modular financial models is not necessarily dive in and start customizing in Excel. Now, you can still customize in Excel. So if I came into here and wanted to make United States and add stuff to here, I could come in and say, okay, let's put some discount rates in here and I could do insert row and I could do say discount rates discount rates and I could do equals that category and it, you'll see this you still automate you still get the benefits of some automation when you're actually building content with Medano so in this case I'm going to put that as a style Whoop, I'm going to go to my build make that say a heading three style and then I'm going to come across and say put in some assumptions here so I'll put in say a percentage assumption fill that right and then I could write in any of these formulas and I could actually put a discount rate in. So let's assume I forecast, say, 100 for here, 200 for here, and then put a discount rate here of, say, 50% and 10% here. All I need to do is adjust this formula here to say uh, this, this, this number multiplied by 1 minus my discount rate, and you'll see that will apply to all categories. So now I've got my 180, I've got my 20, my 10% discount there, which is 20, and my 50% there, which is 50. And that, that will apply even if I actually then go and insert categories, that will flow the whole way through the model. And what I've done here is effectively create a custom United States model that contains discount rates. I could use the same thing to build anything from a complex project finance model right through to you know a basic prices and volumes forecast. But again, prices and volumes, you're probably going to be able to get some modules out of the existing libraries. So the mentality is always, what can I automate? What do I have to build from scratch? Now, if you really want to take this to the next level, um, you can obviously contact us and you can go to the support section of your Medano account. You can go to the support section of your Medano account and you can actually request support from us and we can help walk you through it or do it for you. Alternatively, you can go to the training in your system and there's an entire section, particularly the automation section on automating fund automation fundamentals, customizing modules and creating modules, which actually contains theoretical and practical assessment that walks you through how to do all of this stuff with videos. So it really is up to you how much control you want to take in customizing your model and how sophisticated you want your models to be. The existing libraries are very good, uh, but you obviously can go as deep as you like and we can help you if you need help. So I hope this has helped and given you an understanding of just how much you can do. It's really a choose your own adventure. Good luck and thanks for watching.